The Judicial Service Commission will next week interview four candidates for the post of Chief Justice. The four nominees are Acting Chief Justice Raymond Zondo, President of the Supreme Court of Appeals Mandisa Maya, Constitutional Court Justice Mbuyiseli Madlanga, and Gauteng Judge President Dustin Mlambo. Let's take it back where it all started. We're joined by Mbegazeli Benjamin. He's a researcher at Judges Matter. Thank you very much, Mbegazeli, for joining us this afternoon. So perhaps a teaching moment, if you will, and talk about traditionally how chief justices uh, were appointed. Uh, good afternoon, Ruby, and good afternoon to the viewers. So traditionally, how chief justices were appointed was that the president um, would pick a candidate, and then that candidate would be interviewed by the chief justice, because, uh, but because they were the only candidates, they would inevitably be the, 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 the chief justice. And the constitution, in fact, gives the president the prerogative to choose a, a candidate or to decide on a process of how they will go about appointing the chief justice. And different pre presidents have done it differently. Uh, president Mandela um, decided to, 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 put, to po put forward two nominees. They were interviewed, and in the end, he, he only appointed one. President Mbegi chose one candidate, and that was the only one who was appointed. Uh, President Zuma picked only Chief Justice Mkweng, and he inevitably became the Chief Justice. This time around with President Ramaphosa, he's decided to pick four people as nominees for Chief Justice, and they will be interviewed next week, and from there he will decide on one of those four. And your assessment of the process thus far? Well, um, as judges matter, we support President Ramaphosa's decision to uh, uh, open the process up, to make the process a bit more competitive. It's the first time in history that we have four exceptional judges put their names forward to be chief justice. And now, in fact, as a country, we are spoiled for choice on who becomes the chief justice because any of the four nominees can easily become chief justice tomorrow and they will do a good job. So we, we support President uh, Ramaphosa's process. The only criticism is, is, uh, is in how slow the process has been. It, it has taken a, a long time and we don't get a sense that um, either the president or the JSC is acting urgently enough to make sure that there is a permanent chief justice in place. You believe that over the years, the qualities needed to be the chief justice have fundamentally changed in line with the transforming judiciary meaning? So, a hundred years ago, the chief justice of South Africa, um, well, that was when the, the position was first created about a hundred or so years ago. And back then, his only job was really to look at the apex court and make sure that it runs properly. But the modern chief justice is, in fact, uh, 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 more complex. The, the role has become much more complex. Um, the responsibilities that the Chief Justice has are, 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 are much more than, than they were a, a couple of years ago. And I can name a few examples. So, for example, the Chief Justice is responsible for managing the, the Judicial Service Commission. He is responsible for, make sh for making sure that judges comply with the Code of Conduct. And if they don't, he's supposed to enforce that Code of Conduct through disciplinary processes. He is responsible for running the Constitutional Court and also the Office of the Chief Justice, which is the National Government Department. So from only those examples, you can see that the job has become a lot more complex. And so the qualities that are needed are much more than simply being a judge. But you must also be a manager, you must be an administrator, you must be an excellent communicator. And of course, the primary job of a judge is to deliver good judgments. And so as a chief justice, you can't neglect that responsibility. And so you must still be a very exceptional judge. You go further to point that it's not just about the criteria, but the kind of questions that will be posed um, to the incumbents. Uh, talk us through some of the questions. Um, the JSC should ask candidates questions pertaining to the candidates' vision uh, for the judiciary, you believe? Yes. So uh, just to take it a step backwards, uh, uh, Dudu, the Judicial Service Commission will do interviews next week but you and I sitting here, we can't tell you um, what they, exactly they are looking for. So the qualities that I spoke about earlier about that the Chief Justice needs, 
it's not clear to us whether this is what the chief, the Judicial Service Commission is actually looking for. So the one flaw that that process has is that it doesn't really have a criteria. If you and I were interviewing for a job, there would be a criteria in which the interview panel will look at. It's not the same here, and that is a big problem that we've, we've identified. And so the first thing that the, the Judicial Service Commission should do is to have a criteria, and that criteria will also guide the kind of questions that they ask. So we've put forward some of the issues that they must uh, pick up with the different candidates. One of them is that they must ask the candidates, what is their vision for the judiciary? What do they see? Uh, uh, as, as the, where do they see the judiciary going in the next five to ten years? And they must also ask the, the JSC, that is, must also ask the candidates, what is their leadership experience that will help them to execute this vision? Thirdly, the JSC must ask about the, the candidate's judicial philosophy. So when, when they are viewing the law, what kind of principles do they look at? Some uh, uh, candidates in the past have pulled forward that they are very concerned about the poor. And so their reading of the, of the law is pro-poor. So the, the JSC should also ask those kinds of questions. And then finally, um, we hope that the JSC will ask each candidate, how will they make sure that the Constitution becomes a lived reality in most people's lives? How will the Constitution become the warm blanket on a cold night for all the people in South Africa, who, who, some of which don't feel the warmth of the Constitution? So the Chief Justice must be able to artic articulate that and articulate it quite clearly. Mm. This issue of criteria that you bring up that we do not know, um, is that unusual? It is very much unusual. We've looked at um, appointment processes in other countries. In the UK, the, the criteria is, is published so anyone who wants to apply to be a judge know, knows exactly what, what is needed for them to be a judge. In Kenya, they've just concluded a chief justice appointment process. They have a criteria. In Nigeria, in, in Zimbabwe, in Australia, in New Zealand, in all of these other countries, they follow a similar process to ours, but they have a criteria. So the question we put into the JSC is why don't they have that kind of thing? Because it's so important. We already know that the, the JSC, there's a lot of politics in that, in that room. There are leaders of opposition parties in the room, like Julius Malema is a member of the JSC, members of the ANC, members of the DA. We know that um, they disagree on many, many things. So we're hoping that on this one thing, they will be able to put their egos aside and agree that this is, these are the things that we are looking for when we are interviewing someone to become the Chief Justice of South Africa. Hmm. Thank you very much for helping us um, understand that and make sense of it. Um, Begazeli Benjamin is a researcher at Judges Matter.